Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd. Welcome to Sunday morning. Welcome to church in person and online. Welcome to Good Shepherd today, second Sunday in Advent. So we're going to have a beautiful service. And we're going to go into this time of expectation and anticipation for our Lord's birth in just a few weeks. Now, I invite you to please rise up with me if you're here to sing our first hymn, 413, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Continue with the Advent liturgy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us open our hearts to the mercy of God. You may kneel if you're able.
Lord God, during this season of Advent, we recall the first coming of Christ, and we call you by name, Emmanuel, God with us. Because of God's promise of salvation in Christ, I therefore declare to you that your sins are forgiven. We now prepare ourselves and our community for a new birth and a new life as we await the second advent of Christ. O oh, come, Emmanuel, and bless us with the light of your presence. May the Lord bestow favor upon you and give you peace. Let us offer the peace of Christ to one another. Please share the peace of the Lord here in the building with the international sign of peace. And if you're watching live, please share the peace with those who are watching with you this morning, and if you're watching by yourself during the week, look at a window and say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Because from right here, from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Glen Rock, New Jersey, I'm saying back to you, and also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please remain standing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. be seated. Today we light the second candle of Advent. And we share the lessons for this day. The first lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came to her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning comes also from the book of Luke and it's the Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. It's the word of the Lord. Gospel come from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 20. And this is the good news for us this morning. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see the thing that had taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they may know what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen that it had been told them. Is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace, dear church, to you from our Lord Jesus Christ on this blessed second Sunday in Advent. I'm late in the game, I must confess to you on my Christmas preparations, and I just got the tree last night, trying to find the Christmas decorations and put the house in order. A little late behind, maybe you have a different tradition, you have the tree later in the month. But it brought the thought in my heart about what do we know about Christmas and the Christmas story. I know you know the Christmas story, you know, it's about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, of course. I know many of you have been participating and attending Christmas pageants for a long time. But do you really know the story? Do you really know where is the story? Where can you find the story of the birth of Jesus? If you're in confirmation class, confirmation class, by the way, this Tuesday, I'll see you guys there and thank you again to the acolytes and the confirmants for helping us worship God. If you're in confirmation class, of course, you know that the story of Jesus' birth is in the Gospels, in the four Gospels. But is it the same story? Is it different? How is it different? So I figured, you know what, let's use these Sundays in Advent to go over each story of the birth of Jesus starting with the Gospel of Luke today that has the most amount of information and we'll end on December 26th with the Gospel of John. So you and I can be refreshed, can be inspired, can be lifted up by the good news of the birth of our Savior. So let's go back to the text. You may have noticed that the first lesson was from Luke and the gospel was from Luke and also the Magnificat in the middle also from Luke. This is all the story of the birth of Jesus in the gospel of Luke, chapter two. In chapter one, you have the Annunciation that in Luke, it's to Mary. So in chapter one, the Annunciation, the angel speaks with Mary and Mary is at the center of the story as you can see in chapter two in the actual birth of Jesus. But let us focus exclusively in the birth of Jesus in the two lessons that we have today, the first and the second lesson. What's here? What's here that is familiar to you in this story? We have the registration, 
that Mary and Joseph needed to go to. So they go to Bethlehem. Check. She gives birth in Bethlehem, and there's no room in the inn. Check. We have angels. We have shepherds. Check and check. But what's missing? What's missing in the Gospel of Luke that we know from all the Gospels? Who is not here? If you look at the lesson, if you look at the Gospel, in the Gospel of Luke, who's missing are the wise men. There's no wise men, there's no camels, they're not to be found. There's no star either. There's no star of Bethlehem, and Herod the king is not mentioned either. That part of the story that you and I know will come next week in the Gospel of Matthew. But in today's Gospel, exclusively looking at Luke, Luke will zoom in into Bethlehem, the registration, and Mary and Joseph. And this is the first thing that I want to highlight to you about this Gospel, the Gospel of Luke, that as you know, it's not the first Gospel, it's not the second Gospel, it is the third Gospel, thank you. The Gospel of Luke, the best written of all the Gospels, because Luke was the most highly educated of the evangelists, the Gospel of Luke, the best written Gospel, Luke, as an author and his community, as a Christian community, they have a specific and special call to serve the poor. So in the Gospel of Luke, you will see time and time again that Luke reaches out to the poor, brings the poor in to the conversation, brings the poor in to the story of salvation. And this is true here as well in the story of the birth of Jesus. Joseph and Mary, I don't know how wealthy they were, I don't, I don't know how important they were, but what we know from scripture is that they couldn't find room in an inn. I'm sure you have trouble in your life, and you know that if you know someone, or if you have money, there's usually a place for you. But if you don't know anyone, and you have no money, there's no place for you anywhere. I'm thinking about us here in New Jersey, if you have to stay in this neck of the woods, where's a hotel for you to stay at? Maybe Route 17? But if you cannot afford a hotel, where will you stay at? If you don't have money to spend for a night, if you don't have a hundred bucks, where else can you stay? A shelter? In the winter? As a new person in town? The Gospel of Luke brings us into this reality of people who can actually not find room in an inn. And not just anyone, but Joseph and Mary at the heart of the story. They are the ones who don't have room in the inn. It's especially important for us because the story of salvation will be told and shared among those in the fringes among those who are in need, among those who are in desperate need. Who do you know this Advent season? Who do you know this Advent season today, second Sunday in Advent, who is in need, in material need? Who do you know in this season of Advent who is unemployed? Who do you know this season of Advent who is struggling? Who do you know today, this morning, in your contact, in your phone, who do you know who today is afraid? Think about that person. Put that person in your mind. Put that person in your heart. And follow me into the gospel for today. When the angel 
appears to the shepherds. And the angel says, Do not be do not be afraid. Do not be afraid for see. Do not be afraid. I've told you before, the sentence that in Scripture appears the most, the sentence that God uses the most, addressing God's people. Do not be afraid for see. I bring you good news. I'll bring you good news of great joy. And this is the annunciation, the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. You can text that to someone right now. Do not be afraid. For see, I bring you good news. Luther, preaching on this text many years ago, Martin Luther points out that the angel does not say, do not be afraid, for see, I have good news. Luther points out that the angel says, do not be afraid, for see, I have good news for you. Not for the neighbor, not for the rich, not for the better to do, not for those in power, but for you. I have good news for you. If you look at the gospel, if you look at this section of the gospel, starting on verse 10, it reads, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. To you, for you, you at the center. I imagine this text being read at a shelter today. I imagine this text being read as a soup kitchen today. I imagine this text being read at the hospital today. I imagine this text being read among those who are in pain, in physical pain. To you, for you, this day, Savior, Messiah, Lord. We just finished up our stewardship season last Sunday with Pledge Sunday. And one of the things that I mentioned to you at the time is that part of our commitment to the larger church and the ministry of the church in all places is that we send $25,000 a year to the bishop, so the bishop should start with the National Church, the Lutheran Church in America, and of course, New Jersey. And sometimes that money, it's kind of up in the air, and it's hard for us to think about, well, where's that money actually, what's that money actually doing? But I have had the opportunity to experience firsthand what that money and other, other churches who support the larger members of the church does among us and around the world. As some of you know, I used to live in Argentina. And in Argentina, the Lutheran church had a special home, a special um, shelter for people with HIV. And not just anyone with HIV, but people with HIV who have no place to go when they got discharged from the hospital. So you are done at the hospital, you need to go home, but you have no home. Not only you have no home because you were poor, have no means, but you have no home because you have all broken relationships. Your mom doesn't talk to you anymore. Your dad doesn't talk to you anymore. Your siblings are done with you. You're cut off. You're alone. You burn all the bridges. You shut close all the doors. Now it says you, sick, right after the hospital, nowhere to go. And it was the Lutheran Church who had this special shelter for people in that circumstance. And they will come 
to this place, and I used to volunteer there as a seminarian. And I always was impressed to see the newcomers. The newcomers will come more often than not very skinny, way too skinny, not being well nourished. The skin, the teeth, the eyes, the hands. You can see a hard life being lived. And as they got better at the shelter with proper food and medication, I got to see also how their demons came back. The demons of addiction, the demons of broken relationships, the demons of low self-esteem and the bewilderment of life. Christmas season nowadays is really a time where you and I celebrate and rejoice and are merry and we usually have an approach about unrestricted expenses for us and for those we love. So we talk about what do you want for Christmas, we talk about gifts, there are sales all over the place, and we spent, and we're jolly. Now imagine how the world will be different is the Christian testimony of all of us Christians will be a testimony of giving and caring for the poor. Could we end poverty? Could we end poverty in Burden County? Could we end poverty in New Jersey? Whatever you're watching this service, could you end poverty in your block, in your building? Could we make this world just this little better today? All of us. Who needs to hear this proclamation? Who needs to hear that there is a Savior? That you have a Savior? For you, today, there is a Savior. This is the message of Advent. To wait. But not only to wait, like when you're waiting at a restaurant, for example, for your meal, knowing that you're going to eat, most likely did not skip the last meal either, but is waiting in hope. I love the expression about waiting in hope, instead of waiting with hope, to hold on. To hold on. The Savior is coming. Hold on. Stay put. The Savior is coming coming. Hold on. Because although your family doesn't talk to you anymore, although your siblings are not are strangers to you now, even though you burn all the bridges in your life, someone is coming for you. Not just anyone, but God's only son is coming for you. And this is the sign, says the angel, you will find him wrapped. You'll find him wrapped in cloth. Going back to Martin Luther, and I love the imagination of that guy, he really went all out. Commenting on that line in the gospel that the sign will be Jesus' baby being wrapped in cloth, Martin Luther says that that wrapping is nothing else but scripture, that Jesus is wrapped in scripture, that is scripture, the holy scripture that wraps the message of Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Savior, for you and for me. So today, we peel off the first of those wraps. Write this down. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, the story of the birth of Jesus. What do we have? We have the registration, we have Bethlehem, we have no end, we have a poor family, a woman giving birth without any of the things that are appropriate to give birth. 
We have shepherds out in the fields. Not the fancy people in the city, but those out in the fields. And it's over there that the angel comes with the message. Do not be afraid. Let those words ring in your heart today. Do not be afraid, for see, I have good news of great joy. And let me finish with this. One of the commentaries about this text is how come no one gave birth, no one gave room to Mary and Joseph? And a lot of times you and I can say, well, if I was there, I will open my house. Who doesn't want to have God, only son being born at your own place? Can you imagine? Welcome to my house. This is the living room. This is the kitchen. This is the room where the Lord was born. Happened 30 years ago. We keep the room, you know, ship shape. But the commentary on this text, or one of the commentaries on this text, is that God allowed this to happen. That God allowed this to happen and allowed everybody to keep living their merry lives and worry about their own things. Because God disregards what we find comfortable, what we find it's needed. And the flip side of that is that we do not know what God needs or wants. And I quote, See how God shows that utterly disregards what the world is, has, or desires. And furthermore, that the world shows how little it knows and notice, notices what God is, has, and does. Of course, a big question to ask, do you know who God is, has, and does? But I think it's a poignant question for us to wonder, do you know what God is doing among us today? In the world that we live in, in the covet world that we live in, in the world that you and I know with all the different justices and injustices, in the world that you and I know with its brokenness and its pain, in the world that you and I know of winners and losers, of sick and healthy, of trauma, of brokenness, of tears. What is God up to? Where is God leading us towards? What's the message? What's the revelation? Different people try to answer that in different ways. Today you can see Mary's answer in the second lesson of the Magnificat. And now you and I get to sing a similar message in our next hymn. Amen. Please join me now with our next hymn, 251, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness. Fair. to each 
Israel, your servant blessed, your help is ever sure. The promise to our parents made, the children will secure. Sing glory to the Holy One, give honor to the Let us continue our worship and praise, confessing this faith with the words of the Nicene Creed on page 104. Nicene Creed saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We we'll look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world, for the church, and for all those in need. If you're watching live, please add the names of those who you would like to lift up in prayer so your prayers and ours can be united in one hope and in one promise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father Almighty. Because even though we make mistakes, and even though we are unworthy, you still love us and you still send your only son to our broken world so we can live, so we can be forgiven, so we can know peace. Not the peace that the world gives, but the peace that only you can provide. The peace that comes from above. The peace that comes from the empty tomb. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, as we gather in the season of Advent to remember your birth, we ask that you will still bestow upon us your salvation and the power of the cross that we can see in the manger, that we can see the light of salvation and your baby face wrapped in this manger of glory. Jesus, we pray that you will come to our own houses, our own lives, our own struggles. Jesus, we pray that you will be with us when we walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus, be with us who mourn, be with us who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Be with us who struggle with anxiety, depression, 
and the mysteries of the mind. Jesus, with us, be with us who struggle in our bodies with pain, and aches, and wounds. Jesus, be with us who suffer in our hearts because of regret, because of sorrow, because of brokenness. Jesus, be with us. Jesus, be our Savior, our Messiah, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Holy Spirit, breath of life. We pray for all those who are here in this church, all those who are watching live, all those whose names you can find in the chat and in our hearts, all those who are part of this congregation, all those who believe, Lord, all those who are awaiting, awaiting in hope, all, the, all those who are holding on to your promise around the world as we all celebrate Advent. We pray, Lord, that you will help us do more among those in need. We pray that you will help us to be more generous with the poor. We pray that you will help us and guide us to be your hands in this world, to be your angels in our communities, to be your provision to those who are in need. Allow us, Lord, to feed the hungry. Allow us, Lord, to welcome the stranger. Allow us, Lord, to visit those who are sick. Allow us, Lord, to show mercy, to show generosity, to show forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. In this faith, in the faith of Mary and Joseph, in a night with no place to sleep, in this faith, in the faith of shepherds working the night shift out in the field, in this faith, we come to you, Lord, with our own prayer, with our own faith, in this moment of holy silence and awe. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, Almighty God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your promises, trusting in your forgiveness, trusting in your name, trusting in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 
Now please sing with me. We're singing hymn 239, Heart the Glad Sound. Bless you real good. See you next Sunday.